And Chess.com is here with the 2019 U.S. Champion, now the five-time winner, Grandmaster Ukaru Nakamura. First of all, congratulations. Thank you, Mike. It feels good to win again. But for much of my career, much of my life, I've sort of been the bad guy. Very oftentimes, I've always been perceived as the person who people don't want to root for, who people don't like. Hikaru's like, oh, that guy has more money than me and he gets more viewers, so I'm gonna try to get in on that. Because he only cares if the people he's supporting act the exact way he wants. Checkmate, good game. Particularly quick, Hikaru. Drastic measures to halt the spread of that deadly virus. Wuhan, China, ground zero for the outbreak now under lockdown. That dude is really funny, really entertaining. He networks with people. I think you could get literally any game to go big on Twitch if you had the right name behind it. And I think something like totally that. Totally agree. Allah! Checkmate! Enjoy the ELO loss, bitch! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I sucked out. Oh, I'm so terrible at chess. I can also trade and take and take and if takes, I take, if takes, 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 queen e2, queen h4, g3, knight g3, check, c6, queen b7, knight h1, king there. I don't know what's going on. I'm just gonna castle. I don't want to think too much. Everything I do, I don't do it lightly. There's no time for fun and games. You have to like make the most of your life, no matter what it is, or else, or else you're uh, you're, you're wasting your life. Hikaru Nakamura is a man of many accomplishments. He drew the chess world's attention to the United States by winning trophy after trophy throughout his career. And Chess.com is here with the 2019 US champion, now the five-time winner, Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. First of all, congratulations. Thank you, Mike. It feels good to win again. In 2003, he became a record-breaking Grandmaster. Nakamura is now 27, and he became the youngest Grandmaster in American history when he was just 15. Bobby Fischer had held the record for nearly half a century. He plays one of the most challenging games in the world at breakneck speeds. I can also trade and take and take and if takes, I take, if takes, 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 queen e2, queen h4, g3, knight g3, check, c6, queen b7, knight h1, king there. I don't know what's going on. I'm just going to castle. I don't want to think too much. And most recently, Hikaru breathed new life into a game that has existed for nearly 1,500 years by playing chess with some of the biggest streamers on the planet. Best move would be to move my bishop, right, to e3. It's a move, yeah. Mm. Here. Oh, draw? What the heck? Alright. Does that count as a win or do I have to beat you again? Okay, now actually what happens here is I have checkmate in one. Um, so I play this rook takes and this is actually checkmate. Because you see my bishop protects this knight <laughs> and your king can't go anywhere here. But before any of that happened, Hikaru's mother made the fateful decision to move from Japan to the United States along with her two children. Hikaru's older brother Asuka was the first of the two boys to take an interest in chess, helped along by the influence of their stepfather, FIDE master Sunil Wibomatri. Then when I started dating his mom, and Hikaru didn't play chess. I mean, he was he was a pain in the neck at that time. <laughs> and it was like, you know, I mean, Asuka was a chess player. After Asuka began competing nationally, the family often traveled across the country to attend events. And it wasn't long before the six-year-old Hikaru found himself eager to get off the sidelines and compete. I didn't want him at first to play chess because I thought it was unfair to have him measure up to his brother who was very good. Right. You know, I thought that was putting too much of a burden, so I tried to, but the more I pushed him away, the more interested he became. <laughs> And Hikaru's determination to test himself against others, even at the age of seven, led him to winning his first tournament ever. By the time he turned nine, his parents made the decision to homeschool him so that he could focus on improving at chess. And when he was 10, Hikaru overtook his brother, earning the title of chess master. But the real turning point came when, at 15 years and 79 days, Hikaru broke Bobby Fischer's 1958 record to become the youngest American grandmaster ever. As a player, Hikaru quickly became known for his aggressive play style. Bullet, unpredictable. Weird, I would say, uh, as a player for me. Sharp. Wild. Aggressive. Tricky. 
He spent countless hours playing chess online, but as he told Tanya Sachdev in 2017, eventually he found out that it was more important to study your opponent's strategies at the highest levels of the game. When you start out, it depends what you can get away with, what you can't get away with, and kind of learning you know, figuring out how to how to understand what, what works and what doesn't. And when you play against the best players in the world, I mean, you can try certain things, but you have to be um, much more practical. And I think that's, that's it's a natural evolution. It's how things evolve um, for, for all the top players, I think. Still, his foray into the world of online chess showed Hikaru a way to bring more new players into the fold. If someone was good enough, playing online gave them a way to test their skills against grandmasters and learn from the experience. Again, I'm starting at 500, which also means the people who are near the bottom of this will have the chance to play against. But usually when I do the viewer speedruns on my main accounts, I end up playing only people who are 2,000 or better. So this gives everyone a great, great opportunity. In the meantime, Hikaru continued to climb the ranks of competitive chess. He represented the United States at five chess Olympiads, winning a gold medal and two team bronzes, as well as picking up a number of other prestigious chess trophies along the way. Hikaru excelled at one style of play in particular, blitz chess. Three to five minute matches that, unlike classical chess, allow players mere seconds to make their move. Yes. Hey, I think it's, yeah, check and check and check me. Yeah, there we go. Being the world's greatest player in what is arguably the most entertaining type of chess to watch made Hikaru the face of the game for many casual fans. I think any game, however boring, no offense, I love chess, okay? However boring the game is, which chess is, if you have the right person behind it, you can sell anything. And mm -hmm. the Hikaru guy or whatever, Hikaru? Hikaru? I don't know how to yeah. pronounce it. Like, that dude is really funny, really entertaining. He networks with people. I think you could get literally any game to go big on Twitch if you had the right name behind it. And I think somebody like totally that. Totally agree. Hikaru was out to show people that chess was more than just an ancient board game for the elite. And what came next helped him do just that, in a way that not even a chess grandmaster could have predicted. The mystery virus started here in the city of Wuhan. Measures to halt the spread of that deadly virus. Wuhan, China, ground zero for the outbreak now under lockdown. The city of 11 million now halting all public transportation and outbound flights. We will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods. We'll stop all gatherings of more than two people in public. That both Canada and the United States will temporarily restrict all non-essential travel across the Canada-US border. The global pandemic that put life on hold for just about everyone also put a stop to all real-life chess tournaments. But Hikaru needed an outlet to compete, and so he decided to turn his occasional Twitch streams into a full-time pursuit. I should, um, so some of the side things came out, you see they came out. I should put the replacements in, I should like tape it together, and sell it, uh, I should sell it for uh, $200,000. That's actually what I should do. I mean, it's, it's a mouse. I mean, a mouse is, is more durable. It has more quality than a banana. So why can't I sell this mouse for $200,000, right? What Akaru didn't realize at the time was that he was about to change the way people thought about chess forever. Unlike many other notable players out there, Akaru was approachable. He first began streaming part-time in 2017 and came to understand quickly how best to keep his audience engaged. He interacted with his chat and tried to make his streams both educational and fun. By late 2019, about 2,000 people would tune in to watch Hikaru play. But as more time passed, that number jumped to about 20,000 viewers, with the chess category on Twitch growing sixfold. By the time summer rolled around, the game had become so popular that Chess.com partnered with Twitch to bring its viewers Pog Champs, a chess tournament featuring several notable streamers, with Hikaru providing commentary for the event. I win though, right? Oh I win? My God. I win though, right? Because she was white and she was That's favorite. That's a hard one. Hikaru, you win. seem... Uh, I win! Right? Well, I, I mean, the, the, the issue I have with that is that he gave up the knight, and it, the only reason you should give up the knight is if you're 100% sure you know how to make the checkmate. The choice of commentator seemed obvious. Hikaru's on-stream antics like playing blindfolded or doing chess challenge runs had encouraged some of Twitch's biggest stars to give the game a try. And no matter what his opponent's skill level was, Hikaru always made sure they walked away feeling like they learned something. Just do some puzzles, just play a little bit, and um, and and you'll 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 you won't lose in six moves. I can assure you of that much. Oh, that's that's big. So that's big. Yeah. 
Thank, thank you for the kind words of telling me I won't yeah. lose in six turns. That's no, actually very I nice. Mean, I mean, no problem. And like, I, I think like closer to the event when there's time. If, like, if you if you want it, if you want to do another lesson, just let me know, and, and we, we we can we can do more. And Takaru learned something too that it was possible to take a traditionally dry and serious game like chess and combine it with the ridiculousness of Twitch culture. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I sucked out. Oh, I'm so terrible at chess. Nikara's unique offering as a content creator couldn't be denied. And in August of 2020, TSM swooped in, adding him to their roster of streaming talent. But not everyone saw Hikaru's willingness to be Twitch's chess ambassador as a good thing. Some thought he was compromising the integrity of the game by playing with amateurs simply to bolster his channel's popularity. So obviously, if you're a normal person who has talent, like Magnus Carlsen or, you know, uh, MVL, Kramnik, you know, you, you ignore people with no talent. But Hikaru's like, oh, that guy has more money than me and he gets more viewers, so... I'm gonna try to get in on that. And there were other chess streamers who felt like sometimes he was trying to be king of the board. When Hikaru was doing commentary on his channel for stuff, we were told to not do our commentary at the same time. Three days before the event was finishing and we were planning ours that we were gonna host, we said, oh, we totally forgot about something, but 100% we need to make it on Hikaru's channel. And I said, you know, that feels a bit disingenuous. And that is when they cut off contact with us and said, oh, well, now you're calling us liars, so actually we're gonna do the event entirely by ourselves. So, uh, it's just, it's fake. Still, chess was Hikaru's life. He dedicated himself to it completely, having never even had a job outside of playing the game. And he was determined to bring his passion into the masses that embraced him, no matter what anyone had to say. But for much of my career, much of my life, I've sort of been the bad guy. I'm not someone who has been liked. Very, very oftentimes, I've always been perceived as the person who people don't want to root for, who people don't like. And and so to have all the support from you guys, um, you know, to sort of know that there are fans who do support me, um, it does mean a lot. And that, that's, that's kind of the biggest difference for me with now versus much of my chess career. Not that Hikaru was a stranger to tense standoffs. His well-publicized rivalry with fellow GM and current world champion Magnus Carlsen has been gossip fodder in the chess world for years. <laughs> At the end of the day though, there were no real hard feelings between the two. And and the reason that I have the issues with Magnus, or at least I've had the issues in these online events, very specifically is because Magnus is slightly better at defending, slightly better at pressing endgame. So he has this very slight margin. When you're playing against someone who's slightly, who does these things, I mean, it, I wouldn't even say there's a big difference, but he does all these little things slightly better. That's when you kind of have to start mixing up with the style and playing differently. The Renaissance chess experienced on Twitch, thanks in no small part to Hikaru, ended up bringing the game of chess back into the mainstream. And with the success of shows like Netflix's The Queen's Gambit, it doesn't look like it's returning to obscurity anytime soon. Can you imagine Magnus and I playing? It's like, good game, dude. Here's a hug. Like, yeah, that would never, that would never happen. Um, of course, now that I say that, <laughs> now that I say that, probably for the meme, something weird like that will happen. It's hard to deny that Hikaru Nakamura is the instrumental force behind the world's renewed interest in chess. And for him, the continued popularity of chess on Twitch and beyond means only one thing. Hikaru can continue to keep his opponents in check for a long time to come. To have all you guys watching, all the things that I've done over the last year and a half, two years, like, it's not something where, like, you know, I'm, I'm just doing whatever and random and blah, blah, blah. Like, you have to work very hard to be successful. And I feel like acting like these people are just, like, doing, doing nothing, like, I mean, it just, it just, it's just showing a lack of understanding of how Twitch how the internet, how YouTube, how all these platforms work. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.